What's up, guys? Welcome to Zygreen Card Talk number 21. 21. Today, we have a couple of uh, user-submitted questions that we're going to address. Um, so the first one, really good question. Yeah. It really made us think and do some research. Yeah. Um, so submitted by Charles S. The topic is, uh, you have $30,000 to spend on two new or used cars, one daily and one fun, fun car. What do you get and why? This is such a classic car guy question yeah, when you're yeah. like bored as hell at work and you're just talking to your homies and you're like, dude, like I'm looking on Craigslist and like, trying <laughs> to figure out what I should get as my next car, even that, though you're in no position. Yeah, to buy a new really car. Have, like no cash on hand or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a really good question. So we, um, Matt and I actually each um, like looked on Craigslist and other you know, for sale places and came up with a few different options. Right. So we're going to share those with you. I'll throw them up on the screen as we talk about them. I'm coming from the perspective of, uh, let's be practical and mm -hmm. as logical as possible from the perspective of a car enthusiast, which is to say not very logical and practical, but your <laughs> options are way more ridiculous. Yeah. Like, so I, whenever we do these like hypotheticals, I'm just like, man, you know, this is a hypothetical. I'm just going to swing for the fences and do something fun. But yeah. I have some practicality in there. You do have some. Some bit. practicality. And then you mostly you source yours from Craigslist and I source mine from like Auto Trader to kind of give some realism to it too. Because right now the car market is insane. It's, it's like nuts. super expensive. So the stuff I was posting to you, you're saying, oh, that's so overpriced, so overpriced. It's like, dang, but that's, that's, that's what, the reality. That's the reality right now. Yeah. It's crazy right now. So I'll go first. Okay. Because... Uh, um, my screenshots at, at the first at the bottom. So I went uh, first with a you know eighteen thousand uh, dollar Boxster S nine eight six first gen Boxster yeah. S. Yeah, and I was like, cool. That could be kind of almost can be a daily, but that's more of my track car because we have a friend who tracks a Boxster S. So yeah. had a good experience with that, and uh, so that would kind of be kind of my track car and spending more money on the track car and then trying to save on the daily. All right. How many miles are on that? Because that's an insane price for a 986 Boxster S. So this had 75,000 miles on okay. it. Okay, that is relatively low miles, but like two years ago, you could get that car for like what, 10? Like 11, 12, 12 grand. Like Five. 18 grand is kind of nuts. Yeah, so like, yeah, exactly. So you, you've been looking at cars for sale longer than I have yeah. because I, I, I'm kind of stuck in my situation right now. Yeah. But yeah, just hearing that to just like, dang, yeah, the market is crazy right now. Mm -hmm. So, but this is straight from auto trader. We did all the research, so it's kind of being realistic in its current time. Yeah. And so for my daily, I picked up a 2008 Honda fit sport mm. for 10 grand. So I was like, Oh, it's kind of practical. It's okay. probably good on gas. And, uh, yeah, it's probably reliable. Yeah. I want that reliable part of the daily. So that's the extent of my practical choices for the combo of a track car and a, uh, a daily, daily driver. So something that's reliable, yeah. something that I can put a ton of miles on, it has a, you know the hatch, and then that, that's around 10K, and then 20K is the, the box the dress. Boxer. Yeah, so thoughts on so that. So that's probably your most practical option yeah. right now. Um, also... What did you say the price of the Honda Fit was? Ten grand. That's ridiculous <laughs> for, a, for a 2008. That's the first gen Honda Fit. The yeah. interior is complete trash. Oh, it's like cloth. Yeah, cloth like and just falling apart. Crappy plastics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I like your picks though. It's just I'm still mind blown by the price, the price of both right? cars. Yeah, I was like, dang. Yeah. If I had 30k right now, I probably wouldn't buy two cars. Yeah, honestly, but. For the sake of the exercise and the fun question, you know, we, we looked yeah. up all that. So that's my first pick, and that's kind of where it's, that's as vanilla as it gets for me. So how about moving on to the first pair for you? It's funny because my first uh, pick is very similar to yours okay. in terms of price of the two cars and the actual cars themselves. So my first pick, oh, my God, did I really just pick these cars? All right, $20,000 okay. on a... <laughs> On an S two thousand, I went there, and I know it's uh, like not, it's not even easy to find a nice S two thousand for twenty k nowadays. But I was say, you can yeah, still like, find them. Yeah, like yeah, a yeah. decent AP one with you know over a hundred thousand, like maybe a hundred to one hundred fifty thousand. Okay, or like an AP two with close, like closer to one hundred fifty thousand miles. You can still find them here and there for twenty grand. Man, um, they're becoming a rarity, though. I must they say, they are. Like at that price range, you're gonna have to start paying a lot more for an S two thousand. That's clean. 
And that's a whole other topic. I can yeah, go on and on yeah, about yeah. that because I've studied S2000 prices for a long time. Okay. Right now, as much as I love the S2000, even I couldn't justify paying the current market price. For well, money. plus you bought so many for way less. Yeah, yeah it's it just, just like it hurts bad, so much to think that like I could have kept one of mine. <laughs> one of your and would be They would be worth like twice as much now. Yeah. But anyways. So that's your 20K track car. So it was, so it was actually either that or an FRS slash BRZ. Like right, a right. One, which yeah. it's crazy that they're, they're also like 20K because you used to right. be able to find them for like 15. 15, 16, yeah. But the whole idea is like, you know, front engine, rear wheel drive, manual transmission, very simple to mod and work on. Tons reliable, of aftermarket. Reliable. Yeah, huge aftermarket support. Not super powerful, but good driving tools like good learning tools for driving fast yeah. on a track. Um, and, and then my daily option, I found a $7,500 manual first gen Honda fit. Oh, that's cool. That's yeah. cool. Uh, a manual fit. Yeah. Those probably don't exist anymore in the fit series. They, I, I bet you they don't like in the U S I'm not sure. Oh, the, for the new ones. Yeah. The new ones. Um, the late, the latest gen you can still get. In really? Manual. Yeah. yeah I'm yeah. very surprised about that. I mean, it's like Honda's most economy. Economy that's true part. like and then once they offer like a offer a super economy model they offer manual to make it cheaper yeah okay exactly okay. so sense. yeah okay. so my, for my combo you're spending like around 27 to 28 grand and that's, you have two yeah you have two very reliable cars you know japanese either way you, if you go s2000 or frs yeah it's japanese. that is like the most straightforward practical option that I, I could come up with right when i was doing the exercise and thinking about it i was like basically if i wanted to be straightforward we could have just end the conversation with brz frs and then a daily mm -hmm. you know that that end of story that would be a pretty good but pretty boring option um because you know the reliability is there there's a lot of aftermarket there's a lot of selection right now so yeah i mean um, honestly you could even just get a brz frs as your only car but that's a little side note there yeah. So, okay, what's okay. your second option here? All right, this is where it gets interesting. So I did a flip-flop uh, uh, in terms of my daily and uh, my track car. So I was just scrolling on Craigslist, and I saw this really cool, like, van. Because I typed oh, in van, boy. like, cool vans. And there's, <laughs> like, this van called the Toyota High Ace. Yeah. Super oh, custom. Boy. It's, like, JDM import, which got me down to another train of thought about yeah. imports. So stick around for that. <laughs> but, yeah, this van looks super cool. And I was just like, dang, I could daily that. And, and you know, being all hypothetical, being the least practical, like, that was, like, a $17,000 van. Jesus. <laughs> and, and what model year is it? 94 oh my god <laughs> but daily. it looked oh. so cool and i was looking at the pictures like dang that'd be a cool daily i'd probably get over it in like a week yeah but in this exercise it probably like, has dang. like 13 horsepower oh yeah i'd probably struggle to get over 70 yeah, miles good per luck hour on the freeway doing road trips in but i was like dang this is cool like if i had a limited cash you know i would probably pick this up but yeah. for that 30k exercise i was like dang okay so that doesn't leave me too much for a track car so yeah i'm sticking true to or you know like legitimate not legitimate but like websites that are offering cars that are you know looked over and stuff yeah i saw on shift but it's a craigslist post but it's on shift for a eleven thousand dollar nb miata oh, okay so that would be my cheaper track car option <clears throat> it's kind yeah. of in the same vein as like reliable track car with some aftermarket yeah not as much as the s i feel like and not as fast and maybe not as fun that's debatable but yeah, yeah. that would be my second that'd be my cheaper track car option is this uh yeah 2002 eleven thousand I mean, uh mb miata is always the answer <laughs> that's what they say um, and so, and plus we have a friend who's like super big on Miata, so he would be able to help me out. But yeah, yeah so getting kind of quirky here with my, my, my upcoming choices. So I was like, dang, this man looks so cool. I'm just yeah. going to include it. Why no, not? that's a cool option. I'm glad you included that because as ridiculous and probably unreasonable as that, as that option is, some people can make it work. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah some yeah. people like, they like having those old JDMs as daily and I don't blame them. So, yeah. All right. So for my second option... This is honestly as practical as my first option, okay. but okay. instead of going like more budget on the track car and less budget on the daily, because like some people, they like to be in a nice daily if they're commuting sure. every day. Like oh, they don't yeah. want to just blow the wad on the track car and then have a piece of crap daily. Right. Like right. in our first examples, we kind of have yeah. like Honda Fizz. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's kind of a crap car. To yeah. Be it's like it's reliable and stuff, but 
it's not it's, comfortable. No offense to those who have the Honda Fits, but definitely it's their economy car. Yeah, I rented one, one for like there. four or five days once, and I was like, I, I literally can't make it over the hill on 680 North. <laughs> like, I had to floor it essentially just to keep up with traffic. Yeah. All right, so my second option, it's it's more balanced. Both right. cars cost $13,000, the okay. ones that I found. All right. Um, so for the track car, it's a Nissan 350Z. Mm. It's, it, it's the one with the higher horsepower it's not so that's oh, the thing I see, I see. if you want the hr the high revving model which is the 07 to 08 um I like they're rare 13 yeah 13 it, first of all they're kind of rare second of yeah. all you're not going to find them for under 15 mm -hmm. generally um so but even then i think the 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 previous model it still has like still good 280 car. some horsepower yeah um, big aftermarket support, yeah. front engine, rear drive, really easy to, to drive at the limit. It's just really heavy. Right? It is kind of heavy, yeah, yeah, yeah. But at least you do get decent power. Um, just a good platform overall. And then my daily option was the first generation Acura TSX. And I was able to Ooh. find one in a manual. Because they make quite a few manual ones. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a cool daily. And it's yeah. comfortable. It's, it's got comfortable. like the creature comforts and somewhat more sporty than the Acuras of today. That's oh, for, for sure. sure. I mean, yeah, it's yeah. a it's a front wheel drive car, um, so you know it's easy to work on. Mm. It's it's got a four cylinder engine. It's got the K twenty, so okay. it makes like two hundred horsepower. It revs well over seven thousand RPM. It's a it's yeah. It's like a, basically a luxury Accord, mm. which for, it's for sure a lot more comfortable and refined than a, than a first gen Honda Fit. So like I said, if you, if you want to like balance out your track car and daily a little bit more for 30 grand, right. that's probably the way to go. Which is good you have that because we were kind of doing the extreme, like 20 grand for one and 10 grand for the other, but like going 50, 50 too, that's also that's it's a, good a good option, option as yeah. well. All right. So cool. what's your, what's your next option here? Okay. So going off the JDM, uh, van, like life thing, you know, I was thinking, oh man, you know, I've read some articles where I think it was Jalop or whatever that they were like working with companies that import cars. So I was like, mm -hmm. oh, you know, maybe I'll look, I know there's like a dealer in Seattle or I just type in import JDM cars and it came up with a lot of cool options where they handle all the paperwork and do it for you, which kind of opens things up for like ball in cool dailies. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. one car that I saw is a Toyota Crown Super Salute. Oh my God. This is from 1973, <laughs> $12,000 or $13,000 rounded up. And this thing looks freaking badass. I'm sure so it does. I'm pretty sure it's crap on gas, but you'll look awesome. Like the main thing is like I love the the uh, the uh, the mirrors that are like outside. No, oh, like, are they like on the hood? They're on the yeah, yeah. they're on the hood. If yeah. you look at this picture, it, it looked beautiful. It's like dang, as a daily, I look super balling in this. Yeah. So that's why I was like kind of looking around yeah. at these fun little you know either like key cars or you know like these you know saloon type of vehicles where they're importing them where you don't see them a lot. Yeah, because that'd be something that I would legitimately want to do. Yeah, you know or like the old Celica fast or hatch or fastbacks. Sure, know, the, sure. The, so that was kind of like the fun. Um, you know, daily pick. And then, you know, I wasn't really looking at track cars at this point. It was more like, okay, I'll just find a cool daily and then insert my previous track cars mm -hmm, into this. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. with the budget of a 13,000 already gotten rid of, I can spend, you know, another 17 or whatever. Yeah. So that leaves me up to, a, you know, like the Boxster or an FRS. So, okay. you know, like I was just looking at these cool little like cars from, you know, uh, that are imported. So if you ever had an imported car and, Share your experience in the comments because, like, man, I would totally want to get like something from from like Japan. Yeah. And I, but there's so much paperwork, and being in California, I'm sure it's a lot harder. It is. Harder I don't here. know. So yeah, that was kind of like went from that JDM van to thinking, oh, maybe can import something as my yeah. daily or something. So um, that was my my next. Piece. And I'd love to know, like, to to your you know point, like if if you guys have have done this, not necessarily in California, but anywhere. If you've imported an old JDM car, like super underpowered, and you decided to daily it, is the experience actually as bad as I imagine it to be? <laughs> like, yes, you look like a baller, but you're in like this rickety old thing that has no power. From the 70s. Like, probably the AC is like barely functional, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm curious if it's actually doable or not. I'm very curious. Okay, so my last option here, um, this is going... A little bit more towards like the first option where it's like spending more on the track car side and okay. less on the daily. This is taking it slightly more extreme, or actually about the same, I would say. So I'll start with a daily. So I chose 
I found a three thousand dollar Acura RSX base okay. model, like the like the early two thousands. Okay, so that gives you a big budget. So yeah, it's not even a Type S. It's the one with like the one hundred sixty horsepower oh, like goodness. engine. Okay. Um, granted, the one I found had like two hundred fifty thousand miles. <laughs> it had a rebuilt engine, but I will say if you if you up your budget to like five k. You can find one with like a little over a hundred thousand miles, right? And that and that will last to two hundred something as the one you found. So. Yeah, and it's practical. You know, it's a it's a two door, but you do have a right. decent back seat and you have a huge it's a hatch. hatch. Yeah. yeah, there's a hatchback. So, um, so that left me like twenty five thousand dollars plus for All the right. track car. Okay, and I there's a lot of cars you can get for that money, but oh, yeah. the one that I happened to find in my like thirty minutes of research was a two thousand. Um, I think it was a 2006 Corvette C6 Z51. Z51. Yeah. So for 25. Uh, actually, I found one for 20. It had a, like over 100,000 miles. But I see. If you if you stretch your budget to 25, you can find some Lower pretty miles. decent ones. Yeah. I'm surprised a Z51 at that price actually. Yeah. I mean, our friend Kevin, um, he had one. He sold it a few months ago for like 20. I want to say like 23, 24. Okay. Okay. So, so um, got some American muscle in there. American muscle, just to change things up, because literally everything, all five other cars I chose were Japanese. I know, yeah. You can see our biases yeah. at work here. Yoda, yeah. Honda, you know. Exactly. But it's a good car because it's got a ton of power, 400 horsepower. It's rear wheel drive. Yeah, because it's a it's American made domestic. You can yeah. find parts very easily. It's it's not great on gas, but still, it's it's your track car. It's your track car. Like who really cares? And decent aftermarket. Um, and if you want to go fast and piss off Miata drivers at Laguna Seca, like that's yeah. the way to go. There's always that battle between yep. them. Okay. Okay. Um, I guess rounding it out here, I guess the, the last thing for me, and this is just pure, you know, this is like a cheaper daily that I think is super cool. It's a 95 Daihatsu Mira. Oh my gosh. And this thing go. is like key car esque. It's like very small, but I would love to daily this because it's, you know, whenever you see like a small key car on the, on the street or like park somewhere, you're like, dang. Yeah. That's so cute. It's cool. That's so cool. <laughs> you know? So yeah, this is, I mean, just doing what little research we did, like this is pretty cool for only like 7,800 bucks mm -hmm. and it saves me, you know, another 20 and change for a track car. Yeah. Um, I thought this was pretty awesome looking and so until you get t-boned until you get yeah until you <laughs> just get until a shopping cart runs into it and just just totals it yeah um but yeah and i guess that kind of opened up to i guess we could finish off by saying what other cars we saw within our ranges i saw a lot of camaros and must like the the 5.0 mustang yeah if you go you domestic, can get that. you have a ton of options yeah camaros out there you can get a manual one you can't get the top tier one within this exercise yeah um, because it's hard to get, it would hard to get the what the, uh, the one le the one le yeah you're not gonna get that for within thirty and have room for a daily so that yeah. that's but you can get the not as fast one yeah which would still be okay but you know so I was thinking about American as well mm -hmm. but I just thought you know the Boxster FRS B or Z and S two K yeah the the Japanese side was a little more appealing to me yeah and, and just like well, the one other option that comes to mind that I saw but I didn't include in, in my list was um, a car that I had which is a, a first gen Cayman S oh. so those have gone up in price but you can still get them for like a little under 30 okay. and you I guess you could make that your only car like as I did yeah um, you know I had that horrible mishap at the track with the air oil air oil separators like <laughs> Just yeah, but if out. you get that, you know, taken care of, that could potentially be a pretty good single. To yeah, daily track car. car. Yeah, no, that'd be pretty sweet. So cool. Hope you guys enjoyed that one. Yeah, um, and if you have suggestions that blow our yeah, let's the water. let's hear them. What's your combo? Realistically, I mean, of course, we're in the Bay Area, so car prices might be a little higher too. Yeah. So let's hear from you guys. What is your twenty ten or your thirty k combo? You know, yeah. always love doing this. Always love hearing from people. And you know, like you said, how you introed it, everyone's just thinking about, oh, if I had this much money, what am I gonna buy? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So I'd like to hear your two your two car combo purchases, one for the track and then one for fun. Yep. Or one for as a daily. Yep. Yep. Um, so Charles actually asked another question. Let's hit this one really quick because I don't okay. have actually a lot to say about okay. this one. Um, so while living in the U.S., what should I be doing if I want to one day lap? Oh, bug on my hand. Um, one day lap the Nurburgring. It's now on my phone. Um, <laughs> in eight minutes in a rental Porsche. And then broader follow on topic: What's your end game with cars? Any crazy Ooh, car or game. track day goals like mine? 
Um, so hitting the Nurburgring thing, um, I don't know because I've never driven the <laughs> Nurburgring, but I've done countless laps in a set of oh, yeah. Corsa. And if you're trying to do sub eight minutes, okay, first of all, that's if you're going ridiculous. to an, that's a pretty fast time. But also yeah. if you're going to an open Nurburgring track day, you're not going to have a clean lap. No, there's so, too many businesses. It's like, it's a utility. I mean, anyone can drive yeah, it. Yeah, anyone can drive it. You'll, you'll find people in like, like random little hatchbacks or like minivans there and yeah. like bikes. Yeah. So realistically, don't, even if you have a car <laughs> that can easily go sub eight, don't expect to be able to do that. Right. Um, but in, if you want to learn the track, a set of course, yeah, like any simulator, driving, yeah, sim driving. Yeah, for sure. Um, the next question was like, what's your end game with cars? Um, so we'll both hit this one. Yeah, yeah I, sure. I don't have an end game right now. I don't know. Like, not having an end game is actually part of the excitement for me because yeah. I'm constantly experiencing new cars. Um, like the car I just drove that completely rewired my senses is like the Porsche um, 991.2 GT3 Touring, the manual. That car completely changed everything for me. Like that is probably my dream the, the car. The top, yeah. Right now, yeah. Um, so I don't have an end game. I'm just constantly like experiencing new things and like adapting based on my experiences. Got it, got it. Yeah, for my end game, I haven't really thought about that recently. I'm in a different spot in life right now. Yeah. Uh, my Fiesta, I mean, I've tracked it quite a bit, but I haven't tracked it lately with all the latest, uh, I guess, bolt-ons that I put on. So I, you yeah. know, I, I got like the intercooler and the radiator, and, and now I think I'm ready to tune it. Um, but yeah, I just want to get better on, on that because uh, I basically, I took out the rear seats and everything. And it's, it's I mean... It's, I like it because it's not as hard to drive as a real wheel drive car. Yeah. And I can still have fun at the track. It's not as much pressure as a real wheel drive car. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm not yeah. as like, you know, time focused or anything. I just like going to the track, hanging out with Fenton and all my friends and then driving <clears throat> and yeah. having people in my car. So in terms of that, you know, I just want to get better at that. Mm -hmm. Endgame would probably just be upping, you know, my daily driver and then, you know, keeping my 8.6 right now. So that, that, yeah. that, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at until, you know, pay off the house or something or exactly you know, right, you know yeah. do other expenses i just you know just enjoying car culture and then doing stuff like this right now that's yeah. kind of where i'm at and i really have an end game but i don't know if people have your end games out there I'd like to hear them like what is your dream car yeah you know like i feel like for me dream car like for me dream car track car has always been an aerial atom I know. Yeah. i just like that i've always said i like that i would be cool to have one you know it'd be cool to have one yeah so you know, stuff like that always in the back of my mind. But, you know, like we'd like to hear your guys' endgame if you have one. Is the concept of an endgame, you know, something that you're thinking about? And, yeah, just share it in the comments if you have have uh, such thoughts. So yep. um, I think that's about it, though. Yep. Cool. And then we have one more question um, from Rockin' Racing. So um, he's, by the way, he has an AW11 Toyota MR2 that he swapped um a motor into 20 valve the 20 valve black top yeah, yeah. Um, same as my 86 yeah the 4ag um, and he's going to bring it down hopefully next year sometime in the spring for me to review but anyway his question is on the topic of racing and since you have experienced ownership of several different sports cars what would you look for now if you're building a track focused car mm. assuming you're starting from scratch i assume so yeah, okay. yeah. so for I'll me, go. I'll go. I'll go okay, first. You go first then you, you can first. wrap it up. I think mine's predictable. Yeah, I, for like a like a. If I were to start from scratch, I feel like I would start off more with a wheel wheel drive that is in my eight six because mm -hmm. I, I ended up tracking my eight six quite often in the beginning. Yeah, and then I spun out, and that was a whole different thing. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna get a different car. So to preserve that, so I would start out with you know probably as boring as this is and you might be saying this like an s2000 mm -hmm. just from the fact because it has enough power and you have a the the range in which you can grow from beginning to mastering just a stock s2000 you learn quite a bit and you yeah. become pretty a pretty capable driver so yeah. i would start off with that if i were to start from scratch right now unfortunately the availability of an s2000 isn't that great so it maybe it would shift over to an FRS BRC, which yeah. I don't know what you'll pick, but you'll probably pick one of. I'm, I'm guessing you'll pick mm -hmm. one of those two. But yeah, I just feel like the S is like a perfect package from begin from a beginner car. You can learn because we have a bunch of friends that 
started an S2000s. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, they can grow. They still haven't met the full potential, I feel like. They yeah. can grow into them and become really good drivers. So yeah. if I were to start over, it'd be real world drive. It would be a, an S or a car that has a lot of aftermarket. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that's where I would start. So. I mean, you basically said what I was going to say. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, just, like, you hit the nail on the head. The S2000, as a beginner, it's not an easy car to drive. But as you grow with it, as you learn, as you get better, the potential as a driver, um, it's you're never limited by the platform no. until you become like super elite. And I have a few friends who have reached that pinnacle. Yeah, I know. But there's there's only a few of them. Yeah. It, once you can drive an S2000 really fast, you can almost drive any say like sub 400 horsepower car fast. Right. 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 Yeah. The skills you obtain from mastering a car like that is is like pretty high level yeah in my opinion exactly and yeah. but but given that and i agree with your second point which is um the way the market is now unless you have the cash to blow on a nice s2000 which nowadays is like twenty five thousand dollars personally right now if i if i was starting a new track build i would go brz frs probably um just because you can still get those for like under 20 and it's an easier car to drive than an S2000 doesn't have the same potential at right. the high end, but it's arguably an even better learning tool if you're not just like a natural, like hotshot driver. Right, right. It's more forgiving. It's more forgiving. You can play with the slip angle more easily, and it's still a really good learning tool, and it segues really well into like other platforms. Yeah. So like one one off choices, obviously, good starter cars is like. To even more beginner friendly is like the Miata, Miata, because yeah. they're not as fast. But That's like power. you still learn grip, you learn you know uh, how grip works. Because mm-hmm. you know you're definitely gonna drive to the edge before you start <laughs> losing the back yeah. because there's the lack of power. Yeah. So building up a Miata is another choice, but I think yeah, I think it's pretty straightforward. So yeah, mm-hmm. like I said in the comments again, you know if you were to start from scratch, where would you start for a track car to grow into and build your skills and become a, a better driver? So Yep. Cool. I think that wraps it up. So again, if you guys have any topic requests for the next ZCT, let us know. And thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.